our work basically is we create maps. We create maps to help rescue girls from female genital mutilation. And I'll start by defining FGM. What's FGM? FGM is the cutting of the female genitalia for, for cultural or religious reasons. And it's done in four types. The first type is it's the partial removal of, of the clitoris. And the second type is additional removal of the labia minora. And it's often with the labia majora. And the third type is rearrangement of the genitals to narrow the vaginal opening. And this is usually the severe one. And the other type, type number four, is all the other procedures, which include pricking, piercing, scrapping, and incising. So the FGM prevalence in Tanzania are seen on the map there, where the Mara region, Arusha, Manyara, Singida, Dodoma, Tanga have the highest prevalence. And we are now in Mara region. That's where we are based right now. But we're trying to expand and go to other regions where we have started mapping with humanitarian open street map team in Manyara region. This FGM is usually done in, during the cutting seasons. And the cutting seasons are in December, when the schools have closed or in between. For example, in Tanzania last, last, this year, they have done it in September after realizing that the government is, is, tr is planning to actually arrest those who will be practicing it in December. And hope for girls and women supports local activists and outreach work and safe houses. That's on the picture there, you can see a local FGM survivor. She's also the founder of the safe houses with Hope for Girls and Women Tanzania. And you see, we have these safe houses that have been set up by Hope for Girls and Women Tanzania, but the girls, girls and Activists, the girls cannot find these safe houses because there are no maps, and also the activists and the workers from the safe houses cannot find the girls since rural Tanzania is poorly mapped, and most of these villages are often not found on the maps. And that's on the picture there, it shows rural Tanzania, how rural Tanzania appears on, on maps, on, on open street map, and also the, others, the other picture there shows. Dar es Salaam. You can see the difference. And girls in rural Tanzania need maps, and we are making the maps. And with Crowd to Map Tanzania and also with the help of Tanzania Development Trust. So Crowd to Map Tanzania is uniting over 7,500 global volunteers to map rural Tanzania and end female genital mutilation and also aid in community development. Mm, so far, the map there shows where we have mapped those shaded areas, shows the places we have mapped so far in Tanzania. So how, 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 we, how we map? How we map? We are using remote volunteers from all over the world, and we are also using the local volunteers. So the first thing we do is we set up a task on MapSwipe app to determine where the buildings are in the area to be mapped. This is usually done by the remote volunteers who are based in different parts of the world. And we create, the second thing we do is we create a task on HOIT, OSM, task manager, to map the areas with buildings. This is also done by the remote volunteers. And the third thing is we add names of the buildings, villages, etc. using maps.me app. This is done by local, local volunteers. The volunteers we have in in Mara region and other regions of Tanzania, where we have, they use the, the maps.me app on mobile phones and go directly to these places and add the names, the actual names of the buildings and also the roads and village names, etc. Et so we then validate and add any new buildings, names, and road, land use ETC using the field papers. We print field papers and take them to the field and add roads and other buildings which might be left out in the OSM. And the fifth thing we do is we create PDFs of villages and map, village maps using the QEGIS and email them to the local volunteers to print. And 
the difference between remote and remote volunteers and community volunteers is in there where we see that high, the remote volunteers are highly educated, mostly to a degree level or beyond, and community volunteers, many did not complete secondary school education, and they have, remote volunteers have used maps in their daily lives, often since their childhood, and we find that the community volunteers, the local volunteers we are using have never seen a map of their local area. Maybe some of them have managed to see maybe that world map showing different countries, but not on their local area. So the, and then the remote mappers own and can skillfully use a range, a range of, a large range of technology and there's community and local volunteers. Some of them have never even used a smartphone or a laptop, or even ever been online. And these smartphones that we use, it's, they're a novelty, they're rarely seen in these rural areas, and in the areas where we are mapping, and most of them we found, they are usually owned by men. And some time back in 2017, we got a micro grant from the Humanitarian Open Street Map, map Team, the hot micro grant, it enabled us to recruit female mappers for the first time. And that's a scene in the picture. Those are some of our female mappers that we were able to recruit with the hot micro grant. And, but this, these female mappers, they face additional challenges. And some of the challenges they face include mainly telling them that they're wasting their time and they should be at home doing some tasks which include taking care of the family, which is in most part of Africa is seen as their women's duty and cooking for their husbands and these men at home. And also harassment, threats and inappropriate touching from, from men, particularly when, when on public transport. And we, we had a, a case where some, some girl was nearly raped by these men in the local villages. We were in these local villages and the local mappers use the Boda Boda. Boda Boda is a local transport where you use motorbikes to access these villages that are, some of them are not accessible by road and cars. So the, 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 local, the, locals, the local men were trying to speak in a local language and trying to lure this girl who was not familiar with the language into raping her and taking her on this motorbike and, and just take her to another place. But we found someone who was able to actually alert the girl on what the guys were speaking and she was able to be rescued. And we tried to find out, we tried to get to know why these female mappers were interested in mapping and why they were contributing to the mapping initiative. And this is in their own words. They say that they do it to increase development in their communities. They do it to help girls who are at risk of being cut and escape FGM because some of them were actually victims of this harmful practice. And they also do it to help, to help women in villages be able to access the safe houses where they can get even legal help to end gender-based violence like women beating, and they want to be changed. They want to be part of change in their communities. So how can these challenges be overcome? Also, this was in their own words, and they say that we need to educate people about maps and mapping and its importance to the community because this is a very foreign, like foreign initiative, foreign word in rural Tanzania. People need to actually know what is mapping, what is maps, and they, are, they can actually be able to contribute and add their, their, lo their local places to the map. And also the men in villages need to be educated on gender equality to also stop harassing the women and also accept to upheld gender equality. And also there is need for security to be beefed up in, in rural areas, for example, establishment of more police stations and et cetera. So, and then another challenge is in training. Men tend to try and take over, and take over and if there's no enough equipment to go around. You can see in the picture there where we have one laptop and we have 
the women there, the, the, the women are four of them, but there's one man, and you can actually see the man is the one who's holding the laptop, and the women are just looking. So this ends, ends up making the women not being able to get what the training was all about. Some of them just end up only seeing and coming out with nothing from the training. And even when setting the youth, youth mapas chapter, we specified they should be both men and women in post of responsibility and in post of leadership and almost all the men volunteered, none of the women did. It's just as seen in the, in the picture there, the women lack, they are just, they, they, they lack confidence to actually stand up and be able to, to take up these leadership positions and how, how can we, how can the community help them? How can the community help and increase participation of women in this training, in these initiatives? Is by recognizing the additional challenges faced by women and put in instructions to assist 50% participation of women. And for example, when women only groups, establishing role models which women and young women can look up to and also being mindful of the male domination in training, and also mapping aspects that are of importance to women. This will help attract them and be able to contribute. And more materials on why women, on why mapping rural areas benefits the women. This can also help attract more women to come and join in the mapping initiatives. And also recognizing the additional funding needs to help train and be able to reach more women in rural areas and support them with official letters, for example, official invitation letters to participate in mapping initiatives. And we have seen the, our impact of what we have been doing. Beta maps have helped over 3,000 girls be able to find safe houses and also be able to escape from the cut. And Beta maps have also coincided, coincided with the, a reduction of FGM death rate by 75%. Mm, we have also managed to train six, 600 local mappers in Tanzania. Around 40% of them are female. This is in conjunction with Tanzania Development Trust and Crowd Map Tanzania. And so we, we actually see that mapping is actually a very great tool towards achieving gender equality in Tanzania and also a measuring tool towards achieving the sustainable development goals. And I am mentioning this of last week we, we were invited to organize a mapathon on at UNFPA offices in New York and it was attended by 60 people from UNFPA and UNICEF, HOT, OSM, Youth Mappers and others. And to coincide with this, we also held a global mapathon event, which was held in 60 countries, including the Ministry for Women in Somalia, Guinea, Kenya, Niger, Somalia, and others. That map shows the number of countries that joined during the global mapathon last week. And also Kenya just did its global mapathon just last weekend, I think yesterday. And we need support to continue achieve, achieve, achieving what we, what we are continuing to do. That is 180 smartphones, five laptops, improved solar power equipment, and 10 mentors to help also mentor the young women and young girls in rural Tanzania. And please join us. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll invite any question from the audience. Sorry. Can you speak a bit more about the, um, your relationship with the government? 
Um, just because I understand FGM is illegal there, but it, it happens. And I'm just curious if the government is supportive or more like turning the other way. Yeah, yes, in where we are working, especially in Mara region, the government is supportive, especially during the 2016 cutting season where, uh, where F FGM was being conducted in rural Tanzania very freely. You see, the, the, the ceremonies could be done on roads and people can just pass with a girl who has been cut and nothing was being done. But in 2016, the government beefed up this and using the police gender desk, there's a police gender desk at the police department. So in 2016, we were collaborating with this, with the police gender desk to actually arrest the perpetrators of this act. And it's now going down because the government has stepped in and we have had some cutters being arrested and also being charged in court. And also the parents, some of the parents who are forcing girls to undergo FGM are now being arrested and charged in court. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thanks again.